everyone. So today I will be reviewing a recent book I read called The Upside of Falling by Alex Light. This book was originally written on Wattpad, I believe. However, now it is a fully published book available for purchase. Or if you're like me and are perpetually broke, it can possibly be found at your local library. So I will be giving a spoiler-free and spoilery review of this book, starting with the spoiler-free review, which you can tell by the giant spoiler-free text at the top of the video. We try to keep things simple on this channel. I'll let you guys know when I will start talking about any spoilers, which will also be indicated by giant text. I also have timestamps below if you want to skip the spoiler-free or spoilery parts. If you stick around to the end, I'll also be showing a few of my favorite quotes from the book so you can see if you want to read it or not. Okay, on to the review. So this book follows 17-year-old Becca Hart, a teenager who has a very cynical attitude towards love in real life, but loves to read romance novels. Becca is minding her own business in school one day when her former best friend, Jenny McHenry, accuses her of knowing nothing about love because she has never had a boyfriend, as opposed to Jenny, who gave up being friends with Becca to join the popular kids and have boyfriends, which Becca is still upset about. This prompts Becca to lie and claim that she knows about love because she has a boyfriend. And when Jenny calls her bluff, jock and football player Brett Wells comes to the rescue, pretending to be Becca's boyfriend, and to Becca's credit, she plays along immediately. Brett and Becca basically create a contract where they each have to pretend to be the other person's boyfriend or girlfriend. Becca needs a fake boyfriend to prove to Jenny that she knows about love, and also because when Brett swooped in to save her, he said that they had been dating for a while, so Becca now needs to keep up that charade for a bit. And Brett needs a fake girlfriend because his dad has been on his case about why Brett has not had a girlfriend in his entire time in high school, the reason being that Brett wants to focus on football and doesn't have the time for girls. Both teens have varying situations going on at home that understandably make them both reluctant to enter relationships, and we get to see how those situations play out and how they in turn affect the fake relationship that Becca and Brett have. This book is written in the first person from two perspectives. Brett and Becca's point of views. I think that the writing style was interesting. Keep in mind though that the main protagonists are both in high school, so it's not like their innermost thoughts are super complex and profound, but the writing was still easy to follow and held my engagement long enough for me to finish the book. The protagonists themselves are very likable, which is good because I find that in a lot of romance novels I try, the main issue they have is just having protagonists that are either annoying and whiny or just awful people. Brett is kind, caring, and a nice guy overall, while Becca is also kind, smart, and caring. I also found the protagonists to be accurately depicted as teenagers are in real life. Granted, there is the whole fake dating thing, but other than that, their thought processes and actions in real life were pretty on-brand for teenagers and not as outlandish as some other romance novels I've read. This book showcased several typical teenage romance novel tropes, the main being the whole fake dating turning into real dating trope. There were also a couple of other elements of the book that I find to be common among teenage romance novels, including the fact that the parents of the protagonist didn't really seem to be aware of everything that their kids notice. For example, both kids notice when their moms have cried due to circumstances in their mom's respective love lives, but the parents fail to recognize that the teenagers know of their sadness. In many circumstances, the kids appear to be more mature than the adults, having to take care of them emotionally at times. This book is also very fluffy. It is definitely the fluffiest fluff that I have ever read this summer, but that wasn't a bad thing. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to read fluffy prose. I would rate this book 3.5 stars, but like a good 3.5 stars, you know? I think this book tackled elements such as the effect of divorce on a kid and family, various hardships a family could go through, and how that affects a kid's life in school, socially, and more. It was a very fluffy, light, and happy read, which is good because that's what I expected going into this, and that's exactly what I got. Sometimes it's just nice to read a book where you kind of already know what's going to happen, and you leave feeling satisfied that what you knew would happen, happens. I think this book would be great to read by the pool or the beach, and it's a good summer read in general. It also gave me to all the boys of ever love vibes, which is probably why I could easily see this be adapted into a Netflix teenage rom-com. Also, one of my main gripes with romance books are how unrealistic they can be, and I actually noted down some particular unrealistic events in the book that I wanted to share with you that aren't real spoilers. First off, there's of course the whole fake dating in high school thing, which just doesn't happen in real life. My next two points are more important though. Second, 
There's a scene in the book where Becca and Brett go to some fast food place on their way back from a senior swamp party. You can't make this kind of stuff up. And Brett steals some of Becca's fries and she's not annoyed. And honestly, that's the point when I realized that this book would never happen in real life. Because as a human woman, and not secretly Rihanna in disguise, I would never share my fries with anyone. One might even say that that was rude boy. And last but not least, Becca's curfew in the book is 1am, and like, am I the only one in the world that finds that unrealistic? My dad would make sure my curfew during high school was 11pm, and he would literally stay up all night until I got home at that time. In what world is a teenager allowed to stay up until 1am? I will say this before I start the spoilery part section of the video. Becca not having any previous boyfriends does not mean that she doesn't know what love is, and Brett's reason for not dating, which is that he just doesn't want to, are both valid. Okay, so now onto the spoilery part of the video. And to everyone that is watching this that wants to read the book, alas, I'm afraid this is where we must part our ways. Moving on, I also thought the book handled Brett and Becca's family situations really well. I honestly didn't expect Brett's dad to be cheating on his mom, and I kind of thought that when Brett found his dad sneaking around with another woman, it would be a coworker or something, and everything would turn out to be just fine. I also didn't expect Becca's dad to be living so close to his old family. You would think that after he left Becca and her mom, that he would have settled down with his new family someplace farther away. I certainly didn't expect Becca to actually go into his new house when his new wife invited her in, much less confront her dad at the end of the book. Not gonna lie, I thought his answer to her question at the end was weak. Some things that I definitely saw coming a mile away included Brett breaking up with Becca after the whole cheating thing happened at that one party in the book and Brett punching his dad. I didn't really understand his logic for the breakup, saying that him dating Becca was an extension of what his father wanted for him to do, and I guess at the moment, he wanted nothing to do with his dad, so... Which I kind of understand, but I don't think the logical thing to do is to break up with the one friend you have that actually cares about your feelings and well-being without having an agenda or dismissing any of your feelings. But that's romance novel logic for you. Also, they never really resolved what Brett was going to do about his football career, seeing as that dream was his dad's, and Brett kind of got disillusioned with his dad after the cheating turned out to be true. Brett kept on saying that he was going to stay on the team so that he wouldn't let his friends down, but I don't know what he planned to do about college since he wanted to go to college to play football. Most importantly, I absolutely loved how Jenny and Becca became friends again at the end of the book. Again, it reminded me a lot of To All the Boys I've Ever Loved because Laura Jean and Jen become tentative friends at the end of the second movie. But I'm here for female friendships. Overall, the book was pretty good. I did notice that some of the characters, like Cassie, could have been taken out of the book and the entire plot would have stayed the same though. But I digress. Anyways, if you liked this review, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Also, make sure to leave a comment or recommend any of your favorite books. Keep watching if you want to see any of my favorite quotes from the book. Bye, guys!